good afternoon, dear friends. Welcome to Ukraine Media Center. And uh, I'd like to remind you that we are supported by the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine and Ministry of Internal Affairs of Ukraine. We have been hosted by Sky Hotel. Thank you. Thank them very much. And uh, here, journalists can get every type of assistance they need, everything uh, they need for their productive work. Briefly about our today's briefing. At 2 p.m., we will uh, have uh, Irina Venediktova, Prosecutor General of Ukraine, and we'll uh, discuss with uh, Irina war crimes of Russian army in Ukraine. At 3 p.m., traditionally, uh, we'll have uh, Mr. Matizanek, spokesman of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, who will tell us about the current operational situation on the front lines. And right now, on our air, we have online Igor Terikhov. Igor Terikhov is the city uh, mayor, head of city administration in Kharkiv, and we'll talk with Igor about the current situation in the city. Igor, you are online. Please tell us what's going on in Kharkiv, what's the situation. You're welcome. Good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to say that uh, since the moment when the war started, uh, there was no one day, no one minute uh, uh, when <laughs> there was silence in the city of Kharkiv. There was shelling all the time, and uh, uh, that shelling is both from the ground and from the air side, from the air. And so, you know, the Russian army this aggressor's army, invader's army, is purposely, I'd like to emphasize, purposely shelling at residential quarters. Why residential quarters? It's not just residential buildings. It's not just about separate buildings, but it's about whole residential uh, quarters, blocks of the city of Kharkiv, where peaceful, uh, pe peaceful civilians uh, lived their peaceful life. And starting February 24 this year, they have been under total shelling. Uh, I can tell you that uh, currently in the city of Kharkiv, uh, uh, for 1,410 sites have been destroyed, 1,410. Out of them, 1,177 are residential buildings, multiple-story residential buildings where Kharkivites lived. <clears throat> Now about city infrastructure. Think about these numbers. 53 kindergartens, 53 kindergartens, 69 schools, 69, 15 hospitals, 15. This is the result by today of this aggression by the Russian Federation. That's it. Now we have to move people to, to, to schools from their uh, apartments, to move them to kindergartens, to move them to shelters, to basements, to metro stations. I uh, am very thankful to our volunteers. Now uh, they gently with us uh, receive that humanitarian aid and uh, distribute it. I would like to thank you very much our police. Uh, who also uh, comes and uh, takes that humanitarian aid, foodstuffs and medicines if necessary, and distributes it to so-called uh, zero districts. Zero districts are uh, those where uh, shelling does never stop, where shelling never stops. So I, I, I tell that now we are living the war time in war situation, but city of Kharkiv has been very consolidated. Now people are consolidated like never before. And we, uh, volunteer supporters, medics, uh, people working for state emergency service, uh, police, the military, territorial defense, now we all together uh, make a joint, are making joint efforts doing uh, one of the same. And the city of Kharkiv is living and working now. Uh, Despite all those uh, events in the city of Kharkiv, uh, as I say, uh, our utilities are also in the wartime. They also have their front lines. They are under bullets. They are under fire, uh, fire all the time. But our utilities have been doing invaluable things uh, supporting the uh, functioning of the city of Kharkiv. As a result, now we have the following. Uh, we have electricity supply. We have heating. Now more than 
1,100 buildings have hot water supply. We uh, supply cold water. We maintain the sewage. Also, we remove the garbage. 104 trucks have now been operating today, removing garbage from the city of Kharkiv. So we have been cleaning the city, cleaning the roads, jointly with volunteers, jointly with uh, officers of the state emergency service. We uh, 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 check the, the ruins all the time, uh, clean the ruins, uh, which appear every day because of uh, bombing, because of shelling. So I would like to say that, of course, this is a tense situation, but it's full, fully under control. More to it. Uh, today, uh, you know, in the city of Kharkiv, I called our businesses and, for our businesses, and they opened uh, shops, they opened supermarkets. Yes, they don't have that full range of goods that people were used to have there before the invasion started, but they have everything, they have all the necessities. When going uh, for this briefing, I visited one of the big supermarkets, I spoke with uh, people with visitors, with employees of that supermarket, and currently uh, there is uh, the necessary uh, range of foodstuffs in the city of Kharkiv. Uh, also, as I said, uh, we distribute humanitarian aid. We receive through the office of the president, Vladimir Zelensky, through the cabinet of ministers. Also, I appeal to mayors of other cities, and all city mayors where uh, there was a more or less stable situation even during this war time, they responded to my call, to my appeal, and we have been receiving humanitarian aid. Every day we have been unloading humanitarian aid. Every day uh, we bring it to people. Uh, we receive medicines. Uh, also, uh, I uh, called mayors of sister cities, twin cities, and uh, we uh, also uh, receive uh, humanitarian uh, uh, aid from uh, European countries, from uh, European cities. We receive humanitarian aid from the states. In particular, uh, I had a discussion with three mayors of US largest US cities, uh, mayor of New York, mayor of Boston, and mayor of Chicago. And we have received humanitarian assistance from Chicago, uh, which contains medicines, 880,000 US dollars worth. We brought part of that uh, assistance of that aid to the military hospital, while the other part uh, uh, was uh, given to our city hospitals, because they need uh, medicines too. Uh, there is invaluable help we get from mayors of uh, other uh, cities and towns. So there is there really this unity among uh, those uh, cities in Europe and the States, and uh, it's very important for us and all residents of Kharkiv understand it and do value it. So to briefly summarize, I can tell you that indeed it is difficult, but the city of Kharkiv will uh, definitely uh, survive and live on. Uh, there is this uh, spirit of unity and spirit of fight in the city of Kharkiv. And this spirit enables us to say that the city of Kharkiv will uh, live on and definitely Ukraine city of Kharkiv will win. Thank you very much, Igor. Could you please tell us, according to your estimates, how many people uh, remain there in the city of Kharkiv and what the situation with the vacation of people. About people, I can tell you the following. Uh, uh, currently, according to my estimates, about 30 percent uh, of the population has left the city of Kharkiv. But especially in the last several days, over the last several days, I see that people started uh, coming uh, back to the city of Kharkiv. First of all, uh, those are males who moved their families, wives, children, older people, their parents to other places, and now they come back and join the territorial defense. Also, today, a lot of families come back to the city of Kharkiv, families who were in western Ukraine or somewhere around Poltava or Dnipro, they are also coming back to the city of Kharkiv. So, this city, we have this sort of situation. And, of course, on the other hand, 
uh, I'm very glad to see it, to see that uh, citizens come back to the city of Kharkiv. Of course, I'm proud of, uh, to, to, to see our people, all our people, even though they uh, brought their families to other places, they come back uh, to other cities and join the territorial offense. So that's the situation that we uh, currently have in the city of Kharkiv. Now about uh, ways of evacuation, routes for evacuation. Currently, we can evacuate people, but I can tell you uh, that uh, there is no, uh, no, 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 no not a rush. Thank you very much. Thank you for everything you are doing. Very important CTA uh, information, huge volume of important information. Dear journalists, do you have questions? As far as I understand, there are no questions. Maybe, maybe you'd like to add something, Igor, if you want. Maybe some additional information. Look, I'd like to, first of all, since we also have foreign journalists here and other journalists, I would like to say the following. You know, uh, Kharkiv is a Russian-speaking city. In the city of Kharkiv, uh, almost one-fourth of people before the start of this war had or has relatives in the Russian Federation or friends, acquaintances, acquaintances, or many people would have friends in the Russian Federation. And the city of Kharkiv was always considered more or less loyal towards Russian Federation. Currently, the attitude towards Russia, toward this aggressor, towards its army, has changed radically. It has changed radically. And I speak with people every day. We meet, we see each other, and people would never imagine in their worst nightmare that Russia would invade Ukraine, attack Ukraine and the city of Kharkiv. Now each and every person here is ready to defend the city of Kharkiv till the very end. Now the uh, city of Kharkiv has been united, I can tell you, we are united. and. Uh, there is this great spirit, spirit of resistance, spirit of fight, and spirit of victory, and that's most important. Thank you, Igor. Thank you very much for your work, for everything you are doing. Thank you for finding time to join us here. Thank you. So, dear friends, uh, uh, watch our announcements, and I'd like to remind you that at 2 p.m. we'll have Irina Venediktova, Prosecutor General of Ukraine, and now goodbye.